Everyone, Dan here with the Designer Show. Welcome to our show today. And of course, I'm with uh, John Schrader. John, how are you doing? I'm doing thank good. And Robin Fisher. Hey, Robin, how are you? Hi, hi, everyone. Welcome to the course today. So thanks for being here and I'm really looking forward to your topic today. I know you've got a lot of uh, really cool things to share with us. So um, thanks for being here. All right. So where's everybody today? Robin, you're in your office. John, you've yeah. got a new backdrop. So yeah. Are you, you're not really outside, are you? No, nope. it's a cool house I measured the other day. Oh, nice. In Where's that? In Minneapolis. Cool. Or closer to St. Paul, maybe. Looks like a nice house. Yeah. And uh, I'm in one of Robin's kitchens. So. Nice. Cool. <laughs> you're in Beaver Creek. You're really close. All right. So what's for lunch? Um, all right. So today we're going to discuss, well, Robin, why don't I let you tell us what we're going to talk about today? So um, today we're going to talk about uh, living in place, designing homes for living in place. And there's a difference between living in place, aging in place and ADA. So um, we'll talk about the difference between the two, the three, the three of them. All right, cool. That should be a fun topic. Yeah, because, uh, you know, I've always heard of aging in place and, you know, handicap stuff, the ADA and all of that. Um, when you mentioned... Uh, when we started talking about this, about living in place, um, it's like, oh, okay. Well, that makes a lot more sense uh, when you talk about design, the, you know, the, the whole realm of design going on. So, all right, cool. Um, hey, Mike, good afternoon. Um, or good, you know, depending where you are. Hey, Doug, how you doing? Morning, and, Doug. And Mike, nice to see you. And anybody else, feel free to add your comments at any time. We're, we'd love to have your feedback on what we've got going. Uh, real quick, before uh, we uh, have Robin start, I'm super thrilled to announce that, and I don't get super excited when I get excited, but I really am excited. Um, <laughs> I'm not one of those guys that bounces off the wall. Um, uh, Robin and I are finally uh, ironing out the details for our class, the Kitchen Design Mastery with Chief Architect. Uh, there is below the, the live stream uh, on the site, you should see a little ad for it that you can click on the picture and get to this page. If you're not there, you can type in this URL, which I forgot to add, but it's chiefexpertsacademy.com slash kitchen dash design dash mastery. That'll take you to this page as well. And we're, we're you're not showing the page. I'm not showing the page. All right, okay. Uh, as usual, let me add that real quick. Oh, I got to click the right button here. Okay, add to stream. There we go. So there it is. And again, it's uh, Chief Ex Kitchen Design Mastery. That's what you type in after Chief Experts Academy. And that'll take you to this page. And uh, there's a short video I put together at the top. It's, you know, it's a one take wonder video that'll explain a little bit about what the course is. It's uh, going to be starting on October 12th. It's going to be, I'll just jump right to what it is. Here's a little bit about me, a little bit about Robin. I didn't realize until a few days ago that Robin is a rock star on house. Look at all her credentials that she has. No, she's 38 five-star reviews. This is a big deal um, when you're marketing your business. And, and uh, I was telling Robin, maybe we should have her talk about houses at some, some point. That could be fun. Course outlines can be 12 sessions. I'm going to be, Robin and I are going to be teaching the class. Um, and what we're kind of doing is we're going to do it in shifts where Robin is going to talk about how to do design, what the theory, the, you know, the, the guidelines, the, everything that you need to do to create the plan. And then I'm going to teach how to do it in chief. So we're kind of, we're going to piggyback off each other and that she'll talk about something. And then the next class, I'll show how to design it in chief. So we're really looking forward to that. Um, so there's more information about each session that we're going to talk about. And uh, if you have an interest in kitchen design, this is going to be a great class. You're going to learn a ton. Plus, we got some really cool bonuses uh, to go with it. We'll have a kitchen template for Chief Architect. Uh, I'll do some preference and keystrokes for you. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about how to do the as-built. So give you some pointers on that. Uh, we've got a little library we're going to be uh, giving to you during the class. It's Basically, if you're designing kitchens, here's a bunch of the best things you use in a kitchen in one place. You don't have to pop around all the time. Um, we're going to do three Zoom calls in addition to the 12 sessions. 
Uh, we're going to, Robin and I are going to expand the work center video. So you'll have access to that. And then um, we're going to have a uh, designer's community just for the kid people in the kitchen class. So that'll be fun. So we'll be able to talk uh, back and forth to each other in our own private group, not a Facebook group. This will be a private group within the class. Um, so weekly workshops, impromptu discussion. So there you go. So class can be $8.95 um, if you sign up before October 1st, it's $7.95. If you um, are watching this later and you didn't get the early bird, well, that's because you didn't get here before October 1st, but that is a hard date. So if you want to save the $100, make sure you get here before October 1st. But the registration will go until October 11th, and we'll start the class on the 12th. Um, if you're on yep. this call if today. Some, Dan, if somebody sees us after the classes are all done, they're all recorded and they can start <clears> them, right? Um, at this point, we're not planning on doing that. Okay. So if you want to get into the class, if you want to get the recordings, you have to sign up before October 11th. Okay. Um, um, there's a Q&A down here that addresses that. We're not saying we're not going to do it ever, but we're not planning to do it right now. So that's kind of where we're at with that. Okay. Uh, and uh, Robert and I just talked about, hey, if you sign up today just for this class on September 17th, Robin and I will, Robin or I, or I suppose both of us could do it together, um, We'll give you an hour of free consultation, Q&A, whatever you want. Uh, just let us know who you'd like to talk to, and we'll work that out with you. So, uh, But you have to sign up today. So, again, if you're seeing this later, um, that offers won't be there. All right. So there's a little bit about that. We're really super excited about that. So um, let us know if you have any questions. Susie All right. has a question, and she wants to know if it's going to cover customization of cabinets and doors. Yes. Absolutely. Total customization. This is really for somebody who's really designing a kitchen and not just pulling out of a catalog, customizing, making this um, full, um, learning how to use your schedules, everything. So it's really about producing complete working. <clears throat> Robin is a, you're, I, I guess I'd call you a schedule nut. Um, <laughs> you like your schedule. Yeah, yeah, I love them. I just think they're great. It we'll we'll talk a lot of about that kind of stuff. But yeah, we'll, we'll get into all sorts of customization. And you'll have a lot of opportunity to ask questions um, in, our, in the community as well. So if we, we didn't get something covered in the class, we'll get it covered in the community. So uh, we'll get you questions answered. So really looking forward, forward to it. All right. With that in mind, maybe we need to jump into the presentation for the day. <laughs> <laughs> no, thanks you guys for so, listening to our little commercial there. So, so but Robin, um, I'm going to just turn it over to you. Great, great, great. So let's just talk, first of all, about the difference between living in place, aging in place, and ADA. First of all, ADA, Americans with Disability Act, is a commercial applied code law. You, it does not apply to residential. Um, aging in place is, I'm a certified aging in place specialist through the HBA and, you know, fine, that's great. But the reality is, is I don't ever use that as a selling point because honestly, who wants to be told you're getting old? Nobody wants you to, you know, I never want to walk in the door and say, hi, my name's Robin. I'm a certified aging in place specialist and I noticed you're getting old. So let's design your house. It's like kind of a really bad way to start, right? So let's discuss um, the concept of a living in place. And the reality is we need to design houses for everybody from children to to, to old. I mean, the reality is people live in the home for a long time, and that's what we need to be designing for. So I'm a certified living in place specialist, um, but it's really about being smart, and it's really about paying attention to your clients and helping them. So the, the best thing to do is to start off with, well, let's talk about first the idea of living in place standards, the basic... Um, concept of living in place is safety, creating a home that's safe, that's healthy, that's comfortable, and for all ages. So for anybody who's had a baby, let's just talk about having a newborn baby. You're coming home from work, you have the baby carrier in one arm, you probably have, well, if you're, if you're me, you had your purse hanging over a bag, right, over your shoulder like this, you're probably carrying your bag of groceries at the same time because you're only going to make one trip from the car. You're not going to make three, right? Why would you do that? And then you get to the front door and it's a knob. It's a cat. It's a hard, you know, a knob on the door. I mean, what a crazy thing to put on. Having a lever allows you to be able to open the door, assuming it's unlocked. 
of course, right? Um, so it's thinking about your clients from from how they enter the home into the house, right? How they enter, how they get up in the morning and they make coffee, how they move through the house during the whole day, right? Um, but today we're really gonna talk more about kitchens and opportunities available to you to design more functionally for your clients and for um, increasing your bottom line because really that's why we're doing this, right? Um, so, Dan, can I just share my screen now or, oh, there you go. Perfect. So this was a um, a kitchen that I designed. It actually was a whole house. Right, why don't you zoom into the picture a little bit sure. so we can get a little sure. bit better. I know it's, it's it's not PowerPoint, so it doesn't show the whole picture as well because right. we're dealing with the chief screen, but that's okay. Okay. So this was a house that I designed in um, for a client who was here in Portland. And um, I designed everything in their house, that they, and then they moved to Arizona. Well, while they lived in Portland, he got up one night um, to go get ice cream in the middle of the night and on wood stairs, slipped wearing socks, slipped down the stairs and became a paraplegic. Really kind of a bad way to go, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. So he can walk um, with the aid of a walker, but he can't. Um, he has to have a walker. So we designed the entire house for him to be able to, to move through the house. So certain things that you're seeing in here, first of all, it doesn't have to look like somebody lives in the home that has physical limitations. It doesn't have to look like a hospital. That's the first thing that we're, we need to focus on. But if you look at the island, well, actually, I wanna go to the big blue cabinet on this side over here. One of the things he said, you know, the best part about you know having to be in a wheelchair is that I don't have to empty the dishwasher anymore. And I'm like, Robin, you can yeah. zoom into that, Kevin. Oh, yeah. okay. Okay. Sorry. Remember, yeah. you're in chief. You can do whatever you want in chief. Remember that. <laughs> um, so I said to him, you know, yeah, you're still going to have to empty the dishwasher. So this cabinet right here, this space right here is the dishwasher. And what we did was we raised everything. So we have nine inch toe kicks because we're not sure if he's going to have to be in a wheelchair later on. We know that he has, um, he's using a walker today, but we don't know what's going to happen in the future. So we put nine inch toe kicks in for him um, just so that way they, the goal is, is for him to live in the, for them, both he and his wife to live in this house until they take him out in a box. They, that's what we designed this house for. So if no, I'm, I'm not so sure it's not a bad idea to put a dishwasher in like that for regular folks to make oh it. God, I'll show you another picture of, a client who said, yeah, my back always hurts. I can't empty yeah. the dishwasher. And we're like, yeah, we fixed that problem for you. Too. Yeah, cool. Um, it's kind of like they hate you after a while. <laughs> <laughs> we raise the dishwasher. And then here there's a countertop so that way he can take dishes out of the dishwasher and open up the cabinet. Now he does have a physical limitation where one side of his body is weaker. So he can, the height of this was determined based on his body height. So that he, way he was able to lean on the countertop while he opened the dishwasher, right? And put things on the countertop. And then he was able to open the doors and put things away, right? So that's kind of the thing, the thing that we had to do here. But this part, the island was my favorite part. So he comes home, you know, he likes to have at five o'clock his whiskey. So this whole area was designed so that way he could have his whiskey, by, you know, that he could produce this and make, get his drink by himself. So this cabinet was designed where when you open the door, the um, top shelf would hold his highball glasses. And then the bottom drawer pulled out and it held his whiskey. And then this middle cabinet was raised up so that way his um, ice maker was right there. So this is his ice maker. So he was able to stand here, make his drink. And then they did choose, I did not choose the um, chairs but they chose swivel chairs so that way he could slide right into his chair, sit down and talk to his partner while she makes dinner. And it's just easy. The cooktop is induction. So that way, I don't know if you, if you don't know about induction, you absolutely have to find out about induction. But the best thing about induction cooking is that it's instant on and it's instant, instant off. Within a minute, you could be putting your hand on the countertop. It so is it's, amazing. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's, it's amazing. It's yeah. so much better than gas. 
for a million different reasons. The other thing was she had just called me and told me that she had her hip replaced. And she said, I just want you to know how easy my kitchen is for me to still function in my house while I'm recovering from my hip, hip surgery. Nice. So it's just every she can slide things around her kitchen. It's easy to move. It's just well thought out. Um, so, and so, so there's a process you go through to get to those type of solutions. Can you talk to that a little bit? Absolutely. And here's my favorite thing. Address the elephant in the room. Right. So this was his bathroom and I had to, he could not stand in the shower. Right. He has a balance issue. So you have to ask, I designed a house for um, a client who didn't have a leg and I needed to know where did he leave the, his support leg when he was getting, going to take a shower, where was it? And then how did he, how did he need to move to be able to get into the shower? Right. How can I design if I don't address the elephant in the room? He knew this guy, not this client, but my other client who didn't have a leg. He knows he doesn't have a leg. He knows that. It's not a surprise. I'm not addressing something that's shocking to him at all. So I had to, I know, right? Yeah, he probably, know, every day he notices that, I'll bet. Yeah. I'm aware of that. Yeah. Well, with this client, I had to ask, you know, you sit down to take a shower. And he's a, a small, a lean man, a very lean man. But we put in this um, seat the seat is by Invisia. Um, they're out of Canada and they're the only ones that come in different sizes. So they go 18, 24 and 30 inches. And he's not, a, and they also hold, I think up to 500 pounds. So the, just amazing. But we chose to put in a 30 inch chair so that way he was able to wash himself. I mean, he has to wash his whole body sitting down. So we wanted to give him as much space as possible, right? Yeah. Um, the other thing that we did is, and I'm working with another client who has a disease that causes a balance issue. So we did a linear drain and this way the slope only goes in one direction instead of going in four directions. Right. So it's really determining and thinking about all of those issues and then doing, um, and then hold on and then doing handheld showers, but this is not just a handheld shower bar. This is a grab bar. And you have to special order, you have to order it specially with the hook to hold the handheld shower on it. And this is a grab bar. One thing you need to be aware of is that grab bars can be towel bars, but towel bars cannot be grab bars. Nah. So grab bars are specifically designed to be able to get, to hold you up um, if you fall, right? Yeah. So I never do a handheld shower in a bathroom on a regular shower bar, it is always a grab bar. Well, that makes sense. It's got some well, strength there. Absolutely. Well, 75% of all falls happen in the bathroom mm -hmm. and they happen in the shower. I mean, it's happened to all of us, whether or not we're, whether or not we're able body or not able body, it's 75% of all falls in a house happen in the bathroom. Hmm. That's crazy. So we should always be using grab bars. They do cost more. They're a lot more expensive, um, but you have to make that, you have to bring that up with the client and tell them I'm recommending this because I want you to be safe. And the funny thing with him is that I specified these grab bars and he goes, oh my God, these are so expensive. We're not putting them in. And I'm like, seriously, seriously, everything we've done in your house and you're not gonna put in grab bars. He goes, I know it's just, they're so expensive. Trust me, you're going to need them. And he loves his bathroom. He can actually maneuver in here by himself. And is that the most important thing? To be able to take care of yourself, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's... What do they call that? The pound, penny, penny foolish, pound wise. What's the term for that? I don't remember, but yeah. Yeah, I think you're right. I think you're, you're exactly right. <laughs> You got to think this through. I mean, if you want to live in your house forever, you absolutely have to think about not. And this, so I also teach at our local college and I love it when my young students say, well, I don't need grab bars. And I go, well, let's talk about Saturday morning after, I mean, Sunday morning after Saturday night and you're hung over and you have to take a shower. The world is spinning. A grab bar is great. Oh, right? golly. Uh -huh. 
well, they can relate. Or to the ones who say, well, I don't drink. It's like, well, have you ever worked out so hard that you got on the toilet and then you thought to yourself, I don't know how I'm going to get up. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. So this bathroom we did, or this kitchen, this is a kitchen, um, we did for um, a couple where he's six foot four. And he said, you know, the, I have a really bad back, so I can't empty the dishwasher. And I'm like, yeah, we'll fix that. So we raised the dishwasher. So he was able that. to, but it, it worked, right? Yeah. And you can raise anything. It's, I mean, why are countertops 36 inches tall? If you're it's fine for me. I'm short, but for people who are five eight, five ten, why are we doing countertops that are thirty six inches? And it doesn't have to cost more because you can just put in custom toe kicks. You can right. do standard cabinets and just raise the toe kick up, right? Mm -hmm. And then now they're thirty seven inches. They're thirty eight inches tall. I mean, Dan and John, how tall are you guys? Six foot five nine. Yeah. Five yeah. eight. Yeah. Nine. And I mentioned, I think it was last week or last time I mentioned that our cap, our countertops are 38 inches. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. On the other hand, though, I think, and if I'm really good about this, let me get to this one. On the other hand, this client is shorter um, and is an amazing baker. Like, you know, you want to be on her Christmas list. This is like a favorite <laughs> thing in the world to be. These countertops are 33 inches high. So we lowered the countertops because she's a baker and this is her baking area. Mm -hmm. And if you notice the work triangle for her is her sink, her um, refrigerator, her ovens and her sink. And this is her baking area. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but he does most of the cooking and this is at 37 inches high. So you can modify things. And he has his own work triangle, the sink here, the range and the um, refrigerator. That's really cool. They, yeah. And they have a lot of elderly family members. So we didn't do 36 inch countertops or eating, eating bars, 36 inches or at 42. We did them lower and these are at countertop height or table height. So these are, um, 30 inches high. Oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> Bill's funny. That's horrible. That's a horrible comment. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, you would probably want to pay attention to um, how they're constructed. I have not had that issue with this. Um, I've not heard about that issue happening. <laughs> anyway, um, so think about countertop heights. That's it, and that's an easy way to do to do it, um, and it doesn't have to cost a lot. This is really sad. No, that's what you're talking. Okay. Uh, <laughs> that's <Oops>. what you <laughs> Yo. That's a Bad thing. So this countertop, and you know, when you were looking at kitchens, I'm not, a, this is me personally, but I'll design them for my clients. I'm not a huge fan of the tall double oven situation. You know, they're just this big mass. So why do they have to go all the way up? So this was for an, a client who is aging. They want to live in their home for the rest of their life. It's a ranch style home. And this is their, I think this is a steam oven. It may be, um, a microwave, I can't remember what that is, but we didn't raise it up completely high. You know, it's, we just raised that section of the cabinet and he, he was, he kept saying, I don't understand what I'm supposed to put up there. And I told him you need to buy her flowers every week. So he <laughs> Perfect. It works. I was thinking of putting a window up there and, and have it so it can open and then you can put fresh pies up there. Like, oh, like grandma used to do. The only problem is that's the laundry room on the other side. Oh, okay. so you, you probably wouldn't want to do that. <laughs> um, so then certain things like if the client says, you know, some people are, I don't know, they're adverse to raising or lower countertops. So you can actually put, this is a Reva shelf item. Um, and it's a, um, if you haven't used these things, these are amazing. Clients love them and they are stable and they're, they're fabulous, but these and you're not are using up. Yeah. You're not using up counter space while you're working. You know, yeah. The only problem is, is that the, this cabinet does take up space. So it's really not right. a very tiny. Kitchen. Yeah. Um, but these KitchenAid mixers are ridiculously heavy and who wants to go get it from the closet and bring it in or yeah. have to lift it up and put it. So think about the appliances the clients are using all the time. 
Could that then, could that same could that same fixture be used to to like raise up a cutting board four inches? Would you be yeah, able, I don't see should be able to do that too, right? Yeah, or you could put those in a drawer. You could put a cutting board in a drawer. I'm just thinking but, about yeah. getting it extra high. If somebody needed it extra high to be able to work efficiently and stuff. Yeah. I don't think this goes higher than the countertop. No, but you, you could just put it, you could put a box on top of it and make it four inches high so it comes up above the countertop. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. You could totally do that. Right. Yeah, I don't see why you couldn't. Because these things are rated at holding a lot of weight and they don't wobble back and forth like if you're making bread or something in there and, mm -hmm. and that thing is really moving, it doesn't wobble. So it's pretty stable. Yep. Dave has a question. I have a client who is five foot two. Should I consider lowering her countertop to thirty two or husband or thirty three? Her husband is five eleven. Well, that's that's a question. So if they both cook, you have to really design a space that works for both of them. If one person is the major cook and the other person just washes dishes, um, or is the sous chef, maybe they don't need as big of a space. And that's really looking at the size of the kitchen. Um, if it's really a small, small, small kitchen, then you might not be able to do that, make it perfect for both of them. Yeah. Um, you might find 34 inches is okay. 511 isn't um, really 37 inches is really good. 37 or um, okay. I'm going to assume David that he doesn't like to cook a lot. I would probably lower her counters to like 34 inches um instead of 33 and i think that would be fine it would be very comfortable yeah and dave and doug is saying 33 to 34 is very comfortable i wouldn't go lower than i would stay in the 33 34 and would i think you, it's yeah. gonna be fine would you want to mix mix heights though like you know what i mean if you put everything well, at 33 and somebody and, and let's say you sold your house somebody somebody that moves in that's tall is going to have to remodel their kitchen. You know, what's crazy though, John, about that. I did a kitchen for a couple where we raised all the counters. Cause she's like five, she was almost six feet yeah. and wore heels. Right. So the counters were 38 inches tall uh -huh. and I would go over there and cook. And I'd always be like, this is really weird. And she'd have to remind me that it was 38 uh -huh. inches tall. Right. Like I designed it and I still didn't remember. It just yeah. felt weird. Right. Um, there's ways to do it. So let's let's talk about this. Let's talk about your client, David. He likes to cook on occasion. So maybe you have an extra thick countertop, um, not countertop, but a cutting board that is maybe two or three inches thick that overlays on a section of a count of a countertop. And it's it overlays. So it has a lip in the front and it goes 24 inches deep, a big, it's a big heavy thing. Um, and you can set that on the countertop to raise a small section for somebody who cooks on occasion. It's going to be heavy. Um, so Doug Walter's saying that there's dishwashers that don't go. There are some dishwashers that are ADA. Bosch has a few dishwashers that are ADA compliant. They call them that. That will allow you to um, lower it down to 34 inches. So you just need to look at the type of dishwasher. I think Mila might have a dishwasher that will allow you to lower it limited but you i'm i'm pretty positive that bosch has one and maybe asco i think more of the european ones will have dishwashers that can go down to 34. um so it's a limit it's just something to consider you have to look you have to really do your research mm -hmm. does that help you david does that give you some input i hope so let us know if you need more questions um so this was that same bathroom for um, our client. This is not exactly the way I designed it. It's what they were changed. They changed in, in cabinet ordering. Um, but this was designed so that way he could take his walker and turn it around and sit down while he was um, being able to shave and, and wash. Now, the one thing that you need to be aware of, he's really tall. He had a really tall upper body. So the height of that mirror was set so that way he could sit, um, so that way he could still sit and see himself in the mirror. So that we we paid attention to the height of that mirror because he had a really tall upper body. So when he sat down, he could still see in. But you do need to pay attention to somebody who's sitting 
for somebody who sits and make sure the mirror isn't too high. You know, you don't want somebody like this is all they can see. You know, they need to be able to see the whole body. Yeah. Um, could, just just thinking about the mirror, you could take care of that too by tipping the mirror a little bit. So that, you know, if you wanted absolutely. to keep this design, you just tip it forward a little bit at the top and then they'd be able to see themselves. Got hey, it. Mike. Cool. Thank you, Mike. Yeah. Thank you, Mike. You're um, a man. No, you're a ma'am. All right. <laughs> Can you put up Roy's question, John? Uh, Roy Gardner, yeah, right here. There we go. So many cabinet, if you're working with stock cabinets, then you can go to vanity cabinets. There's still a lot of companies who make, I don't want to call them stock, but if you're working out of manufacturer's catalog, there's still a lot of cabinet companies that carry what they call their vanity cabinets that are typically their finish out at 34 inches high. I work, I'm in Portland. We mostly do custom cabinets around here. Um, we're a very odd little area. Um, but so usually you can look and see about vanity. Some companies have changed them to like living in place um, category. They're changing the name of that category instead of vanity cabinets. Um, so that would help. That's just an idea. I, um, I like taller vanities. When I go into a house and the vanities are 36 and a kitchen counter height, I like mm -hmm. that. You know, yeah. it, it seems, just feels more comfortable. And, and I'm not a tall person. So uh, yeah, I don't know why more people don't do that. Even the 33 inches are much, much better than the old 30 inches. Oh, yeah. Well, the, but here's the thing that you need to pay attention to. Bathroom cabinets, if they, so I'm five foot four. I'd like to say I'm five foot four and a half. And when you're at a short <laughs> level, you take every wow. milliliter you can get. What do you, what do you say when you have eight inch heels on? Do you? <laughs> <laughs> I don't wear eight inch heels. <laughs> I look like a really flat. I'm uh, flat. Just teasing. Yeah. Um, so I, um, the problem with, if you just use a kitchen cabinet in a bathroom at 36 inches high, you can't, it's too deep to get your body to the mirror. So like I wear contacts. So there are times I have to actually get my face to the mirror so I can actually get my contacts in my eye. So you have to also pay attention to the depth. Typically when we're doing a 36 inch high bathroom vanity, you want the vanity to be 21 inches or 18 inches. But then you have to pay attention to how the sink and the faucet all work together. So it's not just high, but it also has to pay attention to the depth. Okay. Yeah. It's, you know, this is what I love is people think designing kitchens and baths are easy. It's like, do you know that there's over 400 decisions that go into designing a kitchen alone? And, and that's just the first day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Sometimes they have to be answered three or four times too. Yes. Each job. Um, yeah. Well, like you and I were just talking about ordering a window. Right. Just John and I were talking beforehand, all the parts and pieces that go into just ordering a window. Yeah. yeah. Drives yeah. you crazy, right? And here's another great consideration in a kitchen. And this you don't see very I don't I don't think I've ever addressed this in a plan mm -hmm. to have that five foot turnaround like you do in an ADA bathroom in a kitchen. Yeah. Great well, comment. Motorized, especially for a motorized wheelchair. But be aware, people use their wheelchairs differently. So just because a client is in a wheelchair um, doesn't mean they use it the same way. So, for example, we did a, um, a house for a young man who was involved in a bar fight. So he was he became paralyzed. He's in a wheelchair, but he had crazy upper body strength. So but the problem that he had, because the rules are not the same for everybody. So this is why I say when you're working with somebody who has a physical limitation, you absolutely have to address the, the elephant in the room. So this guy, great upper body strength, super upper body strength. But he, where he became paralyzed was in the lower half of his abs. And the lower half of your abs is what helped keep you upright when you're leaning over to the side. So he didn't have reach ability. But he had really he didn't have side reach ability. He couldn't reach this way because he couldn't get himself back up because he didn't have use of his lower abs. But he could reach up here and he had no problem using his upper body to like 
you know, you, he was had really strong upper body. So he was able to use that to be able to get to certain things, but he couldn't reach horizontally. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Absolutely have to be willing to ask the question. You absolutely have to ask, you know, like, so tell me what you can and can't do. What's your limitations? What works for you? Yeah. Well, of course, that's one of the keys to being a really great designer is asking those questions. Sometimes the questions that feel a little bit dicey, um, but that's your yeah. job. That's your job. You, you've you got to get you, you got to get those questions out there so you, you, your clients are aware of what's going on. Absolutely. Um, all right. Let's get back to what you were talking about. So, yeah. so um, you know, and it doesn't have to look. It doesn't have to look universally. It doesn't have to look like somebody lives in a hospital here, right? Um, so the other thing to pay attention to is lighting. So this is going to be a shocker, but lighting, our need for lighting changes once we hit the age of 35. And that's when you're going to start. So for the young people in the room, um, you know, don't think you're immune to this. Once you get to be 35, consider yourself um, aging in place. <laughs> <laughs> so these are I absolutely absolutely abhor these kind of light fixtures. These are just a huge glare bucket. They're nothing but glare. And they're fine for a decorative light fixture, but they're horrible. And I'm going to apologize right now if somebody in here designed this kitchen, I am not beating you up. I really apologize. I pulled it off the internet. Um um a sprinter van with different height. I don't know what that means. For different cabinet heights. It's when we were talking about cabinet heights. Yes. So you got a you got a mobile showroom, huh, Mike? <laughs> cool. Um sorry, I'm just popping up the comments here. Yeah, there you go. So pay attention to lighting. So pay attention to glare. And there's the new so we are going to be talking about lighting a little bit in the kitchen the kitchen class that we're going to be starting next month but eventually we're going to be doing a full-on lighting class because lighting is like the coolest thing ever and it makes or breaks your project and nowadays the quality of leds is amazing and they're not crazy expensive but we want to create as minimal amount of glare as possible so if you want to use a decorative fixture like what we're seeing here you have to have some, this is, this fixture is not enough light. It, it's not directional light. It's what we call omnidirectional sure. lighting. You want to zoom in on that a little bit? Oh yeah, yeah. So lighting is going all, oh, and Doug Walters here, who's like a lighting expert. So Doug, let me know if I'm making any errors here. Just chime in. Um, this is considered a, um, a, oh, hold on. Let me go back to that thing. The thing that I was trying to say about that guy in the wheelchair um, you also have to find out how that the client works their wheelchair. So for this guy, he had great upper body strength he, and he was in more of a, um, a racer wheelchair, not a big, big wheelchair. Mm -hmm. He did not need um, five feet to turn his wheelchair around. He could turn his wheelchair around really fast. So he's like a little speed demon in there. So it's if you are working with somebody in a wheelchair, you have to ask, you have to really pay attention to how they work that wheelchair, right? So somebody who's very large and uses wheelchairs differently, it's all, there's no rules. Everything, the question, the thing is, is each person is different and yeah. each person yeah. Yeah. has different abilities. So okay, back this to lighting. lighting, yeah, so that's double lighting. Um, so these light bulbs, these light, these lamps that we're looking at here are what we call omnidirectional. Lighting goes all the way around. It's not directional. This is fine as a decorative light fixture. It is not a functional light fixture. It's just for decoration. It's going to create a mood in a room, but it's not going to give you enough light to illuminate that countertop to wash dishes. Absolutely not at all. But if you wanted to use a, di a directional light fixture, like we're looking at these blue ones that are hanging down, we're able to put PAR lamps in them, um, parabolic light fix lamps. So the light shines down onto the countertop. But as you can see, we supported it with additional recessed cans. So the recessed cans illuminate the task area, the area that we're working on, but we still have enough light 
coming down from the decorative light fixtures to illuminate the countertops to where you could still play cards, you could still read a book, you could still do something at it. So you have the ability to put, um, still do task lighting there. Dimmers are a designer's best friend and you really need to get involved with dimmers. And that's, you can change the way a room can look by the type of lighting you're using. So in this situation, we have decorative light fixtures and then we have our task lighting, which is happening. What, what do you do? What do you do when someone absolutely hates recessed lighting? Oh, then you have to find the right fixture and make sure that the right fixture is designed so you can put the right lamp in the room. In the, and let's let's give you the right terminology. There's no such thing as a light bulb. It's called a lamp, and the thing you screw <laughs> into is called a fixture. That's what. So those are the right terminology. Okay. But, um, it's really determining. You have, when you're determining lighting, you start with what's what am I trying to achieve? So do I want to? Um, I need do my need my countertops illuminated so I can keep all my fingers attached to my hands when I'm cutting vegetables, which is like a good thing, right? Yeah. Um, am I do I need lighting bright enough so that way I can read or I can do needlepoint or I can knit or I'm working on my computer? Do I want lighting to give the room kind of just an overall view? Um, so it's really thinking about different kinds of um, different types of lighting what based on the goal that you're trying to achieve, right? What, what we're trying to do in the space. So if a client doesn't like recessed cans, then you have to determine um, the light bulb that you need to use and then the fixture that works with it. That, than the decorative fixture. You Mostly want to just do. the glare that, that, yeah. you know, it hurts the eyeballs from the glare a lot. I mean, sometimes I'll go to a restaurant and, you know, I don't mind recessed lighting most of the time, but you go to a restaurant sometime and they have these glaring bulbs in there. It's just like, you have to wear sunglasses to sit under them. Um, well, the problem is, is it's probably the wrong um, Kelvin temperature. So it's probably like 4,000 Kelvins instead of like 2,700 or 3,000. Um, it's probably also they didn't use the right kind of filter or I'm um, not filter, but baffle. Um, if they yeah, I've seen a lot of times you see those with the chrome baffles and you get all the reflection are, bouncing off of the, seems like you get reflection bouncing off of that too. No, you actually get less because those yeah. are Balzac trims and you actually get less glare with those. That's what's okay. inside these on this picture that we're seeing. Well, when you uh, show it again, yeah. these are clear Alzacs. Okay. Um, it's also what type of lamp did they use? If they used a reflector bulb, it yeah. looks like a flood lamp. Yeah. Reflectors give a lot of glare as opposed to a PAR lamp. Okay. So it really, um, it, it's it's all the math and science, but it's the super cool part of um, lighting. Cool, and David, yeah. Uh, put your phone number down and I would definitely contact you or your email address. I would yeah, love to that'd be awesome. reach out to you. Cause that's great, thank you. Um, so lighting is a whole different. Well, if you don't want to do that, Dave, just send me a dan at chiefexperts.com. Absolutely. So lighting is a whole separate topic, but we absolutely have to be thinking about it. If you're not, um, and Doug made a comment to clients don't know about recessed cans now and how tiny they're getting. They're going down to two inches. Yeah. Actually, there's even one inch cans. I mean, these things are so tiny. <laughs> ridiculous and the amount of light that they put out is crazy i mean oh here's the best part about lighting is we're never going to see it anymore you're just going to walk into the room and it's going to look gorgeous it's just oh, going to go. no more some of that ceiling no more swish yeah. cheese on the ceiling but we'll spend some time talking about it lighting is a weird not a weird topic but it's just one of those topics i think that gets overlooked a lot um you know you design a plan and you throw a light fixture in the middle of the room and you're good, right? Um, you know, Here's the thing, just... everybody close your eyes. Close your eyes right now. <laughs> and if you don't pay attention to your lighting, this is what your design is going to look like. <laughs> <laughs> it's the most important part of a kitchen, of a design is lighting. Details, yeah. It's, and most people, and you know, like colleges only teach one class on lighting. If you really want to know more, I mean, first of all, we're going to be offering a class, but there's a lot of opportunities for knowing more about lighting. It's you just have to reach out. To yeah. Do you, um, have any, do you have any quick tips on how to keep lighting from reflecting off of a 
shiny surface like a, a granite countertop. Get a matte surface. It's going to reflect. <laughs> but I want a shiny surface. Then... <sighs> Is there any kind of, of fixture or uh, uh, lamp that you can use? Like a like diffuse the light instead of having having it come down directly. I assume that would help a lot. So for under cabinet lighting, especially nowadays with under cabinet lighting with its LED, right? Mm -hmm. There are diffusers, so you don't see the little spots of LEDs all the way right. down your counter. So there are diffusers. Um, I think if you've done the right lighting and it has a um, the right the right amount of foot candles on the countertop and the right amount of beam spread. It's not going to be as right and glaring. Placement so that you're not trying. It's not reflecting off the countertop right into your face. Right. When you're standing there, that kind of thing. Yeah. Well, indirect lighting won't reflect, but it's also going to not give me light on my countertop. Right. So that's where it's a conversation with the client. What is more important? You know, do you want to keep your fingers attached to your hands while you're working in your kitchen, mm -hmm. or? do you want to consider maybe a matte matter finish? And there's so many products out there now that look gorgeous, but they're more of a matte finish. Sure. Okay. And think about this. I mean, shiny surfaces, if you don't clean them really well, you're going to see all the streaks. I mean, if you're a good salesperson, you could talk them right out of shiny. <laughs> <laughs> Just say, this is really, I need you to have more, um, you know, I want you to be able to see better. I want you to keep your fingers attached to your hands. It's even a it's even a uh, situation with light coming through a window on a wood floor that's got a glossy finish on it. Yeah. You know, it's hard to window look out coverings. the windows. Huh? Window coverings. Now right. you need window coverings. But I live on a lake and I want to see the beautiful view. Well, you know? but there's beautiful window coverings that you can put on that will minimize the glare but still let you see outside i mean there's really amazing things nowadays that will reflect heat and um and right. protect your art and your furnishings so, and still let you see out so robin let's re let's think back to your you had given me some talking points some notes um uh here let me just show my screen for a second um, you talked about, you know, commercial law, ADA does not apply to residential agent your place. Who wants to be told they're old? Yeah, right. Um, you know, the, the safe, healthy, comfortable for all ages. Do you want to exp expand on any of those topics at all? I think we kind of talked about it. The reality yeah, is they want to live in their home and they want to live in their home for as long as possible. Yeah. And that's our job as designers is to really talk to them about it. Um, flooring options are a big deal. Um, so for the client who we did her, their house um, in Arizona, he really wanted saltillos. You know, they're in, in, they're just across the border from Mexico, and they really wanted those saltillo tiles. But the saltillos are really rounded, mm -hmm. and it was going to be a problem for his. And they have a really deep grout line, right? Because they're a handmade tile. Mm -hmm. he ended up working really hard to find a porcelain tile that had a saltillo look, but then it was installed with flat. And we really had to work with the um, tile setter to make sure there's no, you had, there was no room for having the tile off. It had to be perfectly flat for him. Yeah. Um, but I'm more, you know, this, I'm in the Pacific Northwest. Tile floors are not necessarily something we want because it's kind of gets cold here. Um, so cork floors are a big thing, something that's going to help to absorb sound. Uh, this is always my, my lovely little joke. As we get older, we start losing high pitched sounds. So for the the women in the room, it's not that your part your male partners can't hear you; it's that your voice is too high. So if you lower your voice, most men can hear you. Yeah, well, I think I have that issue too, where I have uh, I I can't hear cicadas. Okay, because I lost that tone. So my, the, the, your doctor said I. I when I go to a concert, I get about 20, I lose about 25% of the value because I can't hear that range of sound. Right. Um, there's my wife nuts. So the chicadas will be driving her bat, baby crazy. And I was like, you know, what are you talking about? I don't know. So it's actually kind of a good thing, um, <laughs> but, good. but you're right. Yeah. There's, to, I, I can't hear certain tones. And uh, so I know what you mean. That's a, that's more from power tools, not protecting my ears enough when I was younger. Absolutely. So, well, 
I think most people in our age group, you're going to see um, hearing loss because we went to concerts without paying attention to yeah. I mean, how many of us went to rock concerts and, you know, front row and not yeah. listening to anything, not having any headsets and whatever. Um, you can always pay attention to a client who has a hearing loss issue by when you walk in the house, how loud the TV is or how loud the music is, or if they're always turning their head one direction to you, you don't have to ask, so do you have a hearing issue, right? Um, so most people are not going to admit that. But if you're going to see them constantly turning in one direction to listen to something you're saying, then you know that they have a hearing issue. Um, or if things are really loud in the house, you're going to notice that. So then incorporate, especially in a the kitchen, there's nothing but hard surfaces. So maybe the floor is a way to put something in that can help to absorb some sound like cork floors or marmoleum type products, hardwood floors, or, or and I think even LVT is gonna absorb a little bit more sound than um, something like tile or, or hardwood floors. Carpet's a really bad idea for kitchen. Just <laughs> like, bad idea for kitchen and bathroom. <laughs> but rugs are great. Window coverings are great. It's a great way to add more onto your sales is deal with window coverings or adding really nice rugs in the room. <clears throat> Um, yeah, so that's actually another point is, um, and I'll skip to that, go to that one real quickly. Oh, I think I might've lost that thing. Um, but it's really about contrast. I had an image in here at one point about contrast and you can kind of see it in here, make sure that you have a contrast between the countertop and the floor. So that way people can see the edge. So you could do dark countertops and light floors, um, or light floors or, you know, how would I say dark countertops, light floors, light countertops, dark floors, um, but just create some kind of a contrast between the countertop and the floor so that way people can see the edge. So they're putting down their coffee cup on the counter and not on the floor, right? It's also really good for stairs is really making sure the nose might be a different color than the next step down so that way people can see where they're going um, and know where to put their foot, okay? But yeah. I'm also a big fan of carpeted steps. I'm the pain in the neck to vacuum, but I really don't want to find out that my clients have slipped down and became paraplegic again. Mm -hmm. I don't want to hear that. I hear you. It's terrifying. Yeah. The other thing this... you to consider. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Yeah. Oh, the other thing to consider is I showed this last week. I have a whole PowerPoint that I show to my clients to go through accessories in the kitchen. But I was just on Reva Shelf's website. And isn't this the coolest thing? I mean, I don't know how narrow it goes. I, you have to call them on this item, but it brings your, your medicines down. I mean, think about this in a bathroom or something. You could have it. It just, these kind of accessories are so great. This one's brilliant. Uh, somebody put on Facebook today um, that they hate cabinets above the refrigerator. Well, we all, we all design them, but yeah. wow. Yeah. You could now Boom. get to it. You pull great? it out and it lowers it down. And it gets Brilliant. you what you need. I mean, yeah. there's always the thing that. I always the, would do those cabinets with uh, plexiglass bottoms. So when you pulled it out, you could at least see what's up there by looking on, at the bottom. It worked great. Exactly. Clients loved exactly. it. Well, and things like for little kids or somebody in a wheelchair, somebody shorter, putting your dishes in a drawer we're doing this more and more. It's so nice. Yeah. And once you set it well, they're, they don't rattle around. They're in there and it's easy access. You know, this is a different system, but um, there's so many different systems for, yeah. um, for putting your dishes in the drawer. So, and this adds to the bottom line of your project, makes you more money. Yeah. Right? I mean, you're selling more product. Isn't that kind of the, what we're in business to do is sell things? Absolutely. Yeah. The other and thing typically issues like that can have better margins. Absolutely. Well, the reality is just remember this. You're not, you're not just upselling this. The idea is that you are making the kitchen more functional for your clients yeah. and they're going to go do it anyway. They're going to go to the container store and buy junk that partially fits. Yeah. That's what you're designing it for it. Um, touch faucets are like my absolute favorite thing. I have, yeah. I have one in my home and I love it. Um, and I, this is not a plug. Well, it is kind of a plug. Brizo, I don't make money off of them, so please know that. Brizo is the only company right now who makes 
hot water dispensers that actually match the faucet in design and in finish. Nice. So it's fabulous. So now you don't, everything can match and it looks really pretty. Yeah. Um, but hot water dispensers are amazing and, or, but also touch faucets. Yeah. Touch faucets are lovely. Um, you can turn them on just by, you know, touching anywhere on the faucet and you use less water because you can turn water on and off real quickly. And it's just so much easier and it keeps it cleaner. It keeps the countertop cleaner because you're not dripping water all behind the sink. Yeah. 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 Interesting. Oh, yeah. Doug, the comment here is replacing the battery. I um, hardwire them. I don't hardwire them, but I have a plug. So I do both. I have a battery. So that way when the power goes out, my faucet will still work. But when the battery goes out, I still have a plug. So I um, make sure that they're, all that they're plugged in and have battery backup. Okay. So very important. Very important. So yeah, we're about out of time here. Um, just a couple of things uh, I want to comment on. Uh, of course, you know, as designers, we all want to get paid for our services. Absolutely. And I'm working on a project right now. You know, part of what I do, I teach people how to use chief architect. I teach people how to create space i do space planning i do a lot of space planning i don't do details like we're talking about here i just don't do that because i haven't learned that stuff um you know i say hey you need a faucet here i'm done okay uh, um you know you're the one that comes and said hey let's get a faucet like this here's the reason why you want it let's get a, a soap dispenser that matter a hot water thing that matches you know here's the sink you need here's the drain you need all those all of those decisions, those little decisions that add up to an incredible project. Um, that's an, I'm, I'm working on a project right now with the designers in the room and I'm kind of driving the plan and everything while we're doing it. And yeah, you know, so they're bringing all their different samples and all the different ideas and the reasoning of why they're doing what they're doing. It's really fascinating to me because I've really never sat through meetings like that. So, I'm excited about doing this class because I'm going to learn a lot from you about all that kind of stuff. And everybody else that's on this call, I hope you will uh, be as excited about that as I am. So it's uh, there's a lot to learn here. And uh, to answer your question, uh, Mike, yeah, we're going to talk a lot about that kind of stuff. And we'll have opportunity to talk with each other in our private group about all sorts of things, including... Uh, <clears throat> Uh, you know, what do you charge? What's in your design agreement? You know, th those kinds of things that you just can't really talk about anywhere else. So um, really looking forward to this course, working with you on this, Robin. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to learning as much as I can about all of these little details too. That'll just make me a better designer and better consultant with my clients. So again, um, uh, you guys, if you... If you're on this call today or if, you, if you've seen this today and you sign up today, uh, you'll get a free hour of time with Robin or I um, to answer any of your questions, which you won't see that mentioned anywhere, uh, but just for today, only on September 17th. Um, but we'd love to have you in our class, save 100 bucks through, through October 1st. And uh, anything you want to add? No. No? You're good? No, it you know, designing kitchens and bathrooms are really specialized. I don't do structure. You know, I can walk and go, yeah, I think that's, I'm pretty sure it's structural, but I don't know how to fix that. And that's not what I do. I do this. I specialize in kitchens and bathrooms, lighting. This is what I deal with. And you are um, very good at it. Thank you. I yes. love it. And it's, and for, um, I think <clears throat> I was asking if it's going to be more of this, um, you know, designing is practical and this is what it's about is how can we design kitchens that kitchens and spa spaces inside people's homes that they want to be in. That's easy to clean, easy to work in, easy to store their stuff and that they just think you're amazing. That's the best part. Right? That is cool. Because cool. then they hire you back and then you don't have to keep advertising to new clients. You can keep getting new, you know, you get lots of referrals. It's an easier sell. So, Susie, thanks for signing up. You were actually our very first person to sign up for the course. We're looking forward to working with you. And uh, we'll be in touch with you about time to, to meet if you, you know, what works for you. Just email us and we'll, we can figure that out, too. Um, uh, yeah, I'm, the same group I'm working with on this project, 
with an old hundred year old house in Minneapolis here that they're doing some massive remodeling to. And, and I don't know if I mentioned this the last time, but in one of our meetings, uh, they had the new master, the, the new owner's bath. You don't call it master suite anymore. We call it the owner's suite. Um, had one sink in it and the designer and I were just playing with the plan and, and, and we, we got two sinks in and very comfortably, very nice. And, and the owner just about started crying. He was so happy. <laughs> uh, you know, those kinds of things. It's just, it's like, Oh God, thank you. It's a, yeah. That's what we do. So, uh, uh, we're looking to share a lot of that information with you guys. Uh, all right. Um, John, you got anything you want to add? No. Everybody have a great weekend. Yes. Yeah, yes. Really common. Colors are going to start changing. Yeah. Hey, we're getting rain in Portland this weekend. We are so excited. I think wow. we're crazy, but we're super excited about rain this weekend. Oh, nice. So. Yeah, we got a half inch last night here. It was wonderful. So keep oh, it yeah. coming. We need it. We're way behind for the season. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, we'll Absolutely. take all we can get. All right, everyone. Thanks for being here. Um, yeah. Uh, We'll be doing this again, and um, I think our next one is October 1st. Uh, we haven't figured out a topic yet, but we'll come up with something good to talk about. So, uh, Or let us know if you have any ideas. So, you guys, thanks for being here, and we'll see you next time. This is Dan with uh, Chief Expert signing off. Bye, everyone. Have a good weekend. See ya. Bye.